All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Michael um, and Kathy, for your invitation um, to talk about and share NLM Spotlight work um, for our Profiles in Science collections. Uh, my colleagues at the National Library of Medicine and I are very glad to be here on this call, um, and we appreciate um, your patience and coordinating the timing as we all shifted online and um, also focused on other um, NLM efforts related to COVID-19. Um, so again, um, my name is Christy Moffitt. Um, I manage NLM's History of Medicine Division's Digital Manuscripts Program. Um, and uh, joining me on the call are my colleagues who've already introduced themselves, but again, it's Jennifer Gilbert, um, Doran Shalvi, and uh, T.A. Duen. Um, and to start, I um, wanted to share a little bit um, background on our institution. Um, so when we are in the office, um, we are working on the campus of the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. Um, so this, our library, which was founded in 1836, uh, maintains and makes available a vast collection of print and digital resources on a wide range of topics uh, in health and medicine. NLM supports and conducts research, development, and training in biomedical informatics and health information technology. Um, and then the History of Medicine Division, where the content for this project is centered, uh, collects, preserves, and makes available a rich collection of historical material related to health and disease. Um, our collections span 10 centuries, including a variety of uh, digital and physical formats uh, from around the world. So, um, last September, so September, um, yeah, September 2019, um, NLM relaunched its online digital archive profiles in science using the Spotlight platform and integrated it with our uh, digital repository and online um, NLM digital collections. Um, so this relaunch was the culmination of uh, over two years of work by staff from across the library um, to migrate metadata and digitized items from a homegrown system that was developed in-house and maintained since the early 1990s. Um, this was an early digitization or digital library effort. Um, we migrated from this system to open source, community designed and supported software for, um, for long-term management as part of our overall uh, digital repository infrastructure. So profiles and science items are now described in archive space, uh, stored in NLM's digital repository, and accessible to the public in a brand new interface uh, using Spotlight. Um, profiles and co content is also available, as I said, in our um, NLM digital collections, where it can be explored alongside other publicly available digital content from the library. So that includes books, film, prints, um, photographs, and manuscripts. Um, so here we're looking at profiles. Um, so what is profiles? It's, um, it's an online, profiles and science is an online archive of more than 30,000 uh, digital manuscripts documenting the history of science, medicine, and, and public health in 20, uh, 20 and 21st centuries. Um, selected from our archives and manuscripts collections of the library's history of medicine division. Um, it's also, um, we also have collections uh, from collaborating institutions, um, including in 2007 and 2008 with um, Stanford on the papers of uh, Paul Berg here and, and Arthur Kohlberg. Uh, on profiles in science, researchers can explore the stories of scientific discovery achievements in clinical medicine and advances in public health. Uh, the site features 41 collections of digital digitized content um, alongside uh, in-depth narratives um, and the site continues to grow. Um, so from this homepage, um, one can access each of the collections as represented by um, individual um, thumbnails or, or tiles here on the page. Um, so I'm gonna click here. Um, each of our um, profiles is stru structured um, pretty much the same. Um, begins with this introduction page with um, a brief description of the collection and a link to the uh, collection finding aid if available. Um, we do want to be clear to our audience that 
our collection is selective. Um, so we're scanning approximately 200, 250 items um, from each collection and that more would be available to researchers who are able to um, come on site. Um, we are engaging more and more in uh, mass digitization efforts at the library, but um, these collections so far represent um, a more selective approach. Um, so in this case, we're looking at uh, the profile of Dr. C. Everett Koop, um, and this is a collection uh, held at the National Library of Medicine. Um, so a link uh, from the top, from the uh, menu bar at the top to uh, the story, so this we call it the story, provides access to the in-depth biographical narrative texts. Um, these are organized chronologically with an aim um, to show how the individual became interested in science or medicine, their career path, um, challenges, obstacles, et cetera, along, uh, based along the way. Um, so this profile of, of Dr. Koop, for example, introduces readers to his career as a pioneering pediatric surgeon and subsequent role as a U.S. Surgeon General, focusing on major public health concerns, smoking, violence, um, HIV, AIDS. Um, from the story, one can also access links to additional resources, so basically bibliography and glossary um, with terms um, and definitions specific to kind of the time period of whatever the um, profile is featuring. Um, let's see. And then within at the bottom of each section of the narrative, um, there is a link to a subset of collection items that relate to um, that section. So you can click here and see all of the items that kind of fit within that biographical information section. Let's see, so alongside the story, um, researchers can select collection items from the menu bar to um, browse the digitized collections, uh, collection items and um, list, gallery, or slideshow views. Um, one can browse all items in a profile or sets of documents, visuals, or um, moving images. Um, so within the Coop collection, one can see you know, a variety of documents. We have photographic prints, correspondence, speeches, memoirs, um, published articles, editorials, and, and uh, much more. Um, in addition to browse, one can, of course, um, always search within a collection um, and filter by uh, cre you know, creator, subject, genre, and more. Um, if a researcher clicks on genre, for example, um, and then on speeches, um, they will see each speech uh, listed. There are many um, in this collection. Um, to limit further, one can uh, refine the results to a particular subject, um, like AIDS. Um, and then one can also see I'm gonna clear this, um, uh, do a more specific search. Um, I think I already entered this in, so I'm just gonna click on this here. Um, and the first item on this, um, list of items related to this publication is um, a mailer called Understanding AIDS that was distributed in um, 1988 to um, over a million households in the U.S., which um, is kind of a fun fact. It was the largest uh, government mailing in history on anything at the time, um, including on, on, on taxes. Um, so within the item viewer, we are, um, we are using the universal viewer uh, researchers can access, manipulate, um, share profiles content, um, including, you know, zooming in and out, um, that I'd feature the kind of most famous NIH person right now, Dr. Tony Fauci, um, here, um, you know, you can flip through the pages, um, uh, all kinds of, of features that are offered by the Universal Viewer. Um, we're using uh, IIIF, uh, to share items across um, NLM systems and um, beyond. Um, and one is also able to um, search the OCR text, 
um, and then download um, that text or a PDF version of this object. And, and the download options kind of just vary depending on the format of the um, object. If it's a visual or, or film, you get different options. Um, and as I said, you can share the um, uh, image via IIIF. Um, let's see. So the metadata for each object is available, is accessible on the viewer um, to the right here. And then we've also um, included it below the object. Um, the field names now, um, they're the, the same as, as they were in the legacy site. So we've kind of preserved that. Um, there's still some cleanup work to do. Um, we're actually preparing for a um, kind of a, a major metadata update now that will bring in um, a few additional fields, um, including um, relation information. So as, as the documents in our collections relate to one another, we do want to provide those, those links. Um, and then also trying to um, provide more links between the, um, the spotlight instance and, and the um, item as it exists in our digital collections. Here, um, the display of visual images um, is very similar that I just pull one up. Um, let's see, there's a cartoon. This is also related to that same mailer that I um, showed you before. Um, and so there were a ton of um, political cartoons um, during this time about that mailer and, and people kind of getting it in the mail. And this is, you know, presumably you know, mother leaving her young children at home and, and a little hesitant about what might um, arrive um, while she's out. Um, so anyways, here's a, the, the image here. And um, again, you can download either the um, TIFF image or um, JPEG. The um, other elements we've um, included in the site are our contact page. So it just links to our customer service. Um, for reference, um, and then we have, you know, an, an about page um, describing, you know, what you'll find on the collection, how it's organized, our policy for how we select collections for inclusion on profiles, a little bit about our own history, and a list of our um, collaborators. About half of the collection, so I said there were 41, about half of those have been made, made available through um, collaboration with other institutions. Um, and then I just wanted to say a couple words about, um, you know, what's going on now. Um, as I mentioned, we're doing a, a major metadata update. Um, and as the existing collection that we're seeing now, um, it represented a migration. So we were, that was the first goal was getting our older collections, our legacy collections into Spotlight. Um, so now we're in um, a position of wanting to create uh, new workflows for adding new collections. Um, and then we also um, were excited to implement and experiment with more of the spotlight um, widgets to include more um, visuals within the, um, the, uh, the individual narratives. Um, you may have noticed it was kind of a, a long stretch of text. And so um, we like the options that spotlight provides for kind of breaking that up a little bit. Um, and then lastly, um, as we're showing this across our library, we have um, other areas, other um, colleagues interested in developing or seeing if Spotlight might work for their projects. So we might be um, seeing how, um, you know, we could expand this um, so that there might be other types of Spotlight collections um, across our library. Um, and I don't know yeah, how much more time we have. I know I kind of used a little bit getting set up this uh, afternoon, but um, we're happy to answer any questions that you might have, um, and I'll invite my colleagues to jump in, especially if it's about um, the implementation or um, sort of the admin um, features um, and customization that, that we did. But thank you, thank you for your time. Great, nice presentation, thank you very much. Uh, if there are questions out there, please unmute and go ahead and ask away um I'm, i actually have a quick comment and a quick question the the mm -hmm. quick comment is um and thank you so much christy for an excellent presentation and to all of your colleagues doing uh the work on this spotlight uh instance 
Um, um, I want to encourage you to um, contribute to the Spotlight Community Wiki. And um, as soon as I stop this recording, I'll find the link, or we can find the link and 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 put it put it in chat or remind people in the um, notes for the for for the meeting. So um, it's a central place that we hope that everybody can go to to find information about. Um, about other institutions that are running instances of Spotlight and um, not only links to their Spotlight site, but also any information you all are willing to share about how you manage your service and, and your product. Wonderful, um, yes, we'll add to that. Mm -hmm. that. That would be great. Um, the very quick question, and I don't wanna go down uh, too much of a non-Spotlight <laughs> rabbit hole, but I know that this question comes up again and again and again. Um, I saw that you had, uh, just a small handful, maybe five or six items that are uh, that are videos, and um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sure people wonder what you're using for um, media streaming. Sure, I don't know. Ta, do you want to address how we're presenting video in the Universal Viewer? Yeah, sure. Um, I think at first we use the uh, Universal Viewer to display the video. But uh, we run into issue of uh, playing the, the transcript. Um, so we just switch to the native video. Christy, can you just open the video? Yes. So people can see. Sure, it. sure. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so basically we just um, use a native video for each browser to display it. So that's why when you click play, uh, click play button, uh, the transcript can play. So uh, we don't use uni universal viewer or to display video anymore. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does, thank you. Okay, thanks. I I also would just like to point out that um, in the, on the about page, there's a link to some blog posts that we've written for our History of Medicine Division blog um, for anyone who wants to read about individual collections or about kind of the launch um, last fall. Um, Mike, I think you might be talking, but you're muted. I should know better. <laughs> Thank you. I, I wonder if I can. I wonder if I could just uh, stop the recording. Maybe it sure. sounds like we're okay. I'm yeah. going to do that. I did put the uh, the link to our wiki out there, Christine. We certainly invite you to.